Hi guys and girls, in this tutorial we are going to add um, a start screen, a win screen. We're going to set our game to uh, score, so our player will be able to shoot the enemies and gain a score from that. And we're going to add some lives and a uh, game over when those lives run out. Uh, the first thing we are going to do is set up the uh, start screen. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a background and we're going to create a new background and we're going to call it BCK underscore start screen. We're going to load background and what I've done is I've created um, an 800 by 600 start screen and it just says press the space bar to start. So click OK on that. We're then going to create um, a new object and that's going to be obj underscore start screen and within this what we're going to do is we're going to add an event and we're going to add a keyboard event so when the space bar is pressed it's going to load level one. click OK again OK and then finally for our start uh, screen we're going to create a room so we're going to go up to new room settings we're going to make it 800 by 600 we're going to call it uh, RM underscore start screen and we're going to assign it a background and that background is going to be our start screen that we made and we're gonna go to objects select the obj start screen object and place it in that room and what this will do is when we run the start screen and press the space bar it will then load level one so let's tick that now uh, make sure that our rm start screen is the first room in the rooms list and run the game as you can see uh, we've got our start screen and if we press spacebar it starts the game okay what we're going to do now is we are going to create our win screen and so the win for this game will happen when the flag is removed is returned to the base now the problem is we've already told in obg flag object that when the uh, when the flag is returned to the base we actually want it to game over so we're going to have to correct that so I believe it's in obj base actually so let's open obj base and you can see that when the flag collides with the base it ends the game we do not want that to happen so let's uh, delete that now click OK so we're going to create our windscreen so we're going to go up and create a new background we're going to call it bck underscore win screen and we're gonna load a background that we've made uh, 800 by 600 and there we go click OK and that's the background done we're gonna have to create a room like we did for the start, start screen settings we're gonna call it RM underscore win screen we're going to make it 800 by 600. We're going to go to backgrounds. We're going to assign the windscreen background. We're going to go to objects and we are actually going to um, put in our OBJ start screen object. And that means that when the space bar is pressed, even though you've won the game, you can then go and start the game all over again. So let's uh, tick that. And that's that done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to program the actual the win of the game. So what we'll do is we'll open obj flag and we'll say uh, we'll create a collision with base event. So add event collision when it collides with obj base 
what we want it to do is we want it to load um, a different room. So we'll go into main one. We'll say load a different room, load our windscreen, RM windscreen. Hey, hey. Okay, so when we run the game, we should see our start screen straight away. Press the space bar, grab our flag, rush straight back to our base. We get the year one, and if we press space, we can restart the game again. We now want to sort out our scoring. So open uh, OBJ projectile, and in here we're going to add some collision events. So add event collision with OBJ enemy. And when you hit OBJ enemy, you want to set the score. And you want to use this icon here, which if you hover over it, it'll say set score. You want to set that to a number for the score. So we're going to set it to 20. Okay, add another collision event. OBJ enemy 2, this is a slightly faster enemy, so we could have the score slightly higher at maybe 25. Okay, on both of these, on the set score, you want to make sure that relative is ticked both times. It's an easy mistake to make, um, and it's one that will stop your score from working properly. So click OK on that, and that is our um, player score done we're going to want to create some lives so uh, what we're going to do is uh, add player lives so we're going to give the player three lives and we're going to set it up in a variable uh, assigning it the value of three which is a whole number so it's an integer so we're going to open obj player and we can start to uh, do this in here so to do this, what we do is we click on the create event, go to the control tab, and we're going to set variable. We're going to call it lives, and we're going to set it to the value of three, and click OK. So that is saying that when our player is created, we're going to create a variable called lives and set it to the number three. You can have as many lives as you want. It's entirely up to you. It's your choice. We're going to want to display these on screen. So we're going to add event and we're going to add a draw event. And we're going to draw GUI. And within that GUI, we're going to uh, click on the score tab. And we are going to draw. Uh, draw the lives, actually. Draw the number of lives, and the X will be 700, the Y will be 0. Click OK, and we're going to draw the score. And the new score uh, will be 0. Don't worry about that. Sorry, that's a set score. Oh, we want draw score. Let's get rid of that one. About that. Yep. So click OK, run our game, and you can see that we've got score zero, lives three. Okay, so absolutely perfect, exactly what we want. The last part is going to require us to actually write some code, um, and this is how we lose lives. Okay, so this is to take a life away. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the collision with enemy event. So we're going to go to OBJ player. And when OBJ player collides with the enemy, we're going to want it to, to do a piece of code. So we can do that by clicking in to, I believe it's the control tab. And then down here where it says code, you want this one. Drag it in and it brings up the coding window. And we're going to have to write some code. So I'm going to just talk you through this in case you haven't actually come across any sort of code we get before. So when it collides, we want to say lives uh, minus equals one. 
So we're going to say take away one life. We're then going to do um, an if statement. So if lives equals zero, so if we have no lives left, we're going to want it to, to do something. And what we want it to do is show underscore message. And you can see it's brought up a little drop down for us here. So we can just double click that message. And we want it to say, game over. Uh, you, just did an exclamation mark there, just for a dramatic effect. Uh, you have run out of lives. And what we're going to do is um, put a comma in. We can say your score was, and then we'll leave a space, put a speech mark in, and plus string. Score, the variable score. So that will show us um, what the actual current score is at the time. We need to close that first bracket. We want the game to end. Game end, and you can see it's already there. And then what we'll do is uh, close and just finish it off. Holy bracket. So there's our piece of code, and we're just going to tick yes. So click OK, and let's do a bit more testing. So let's run the game. Press the spacebar, grab the flag, and go get ourselves killed by some rock monsters. So there goes one life. I've got two lives left, as you can see in the top right hand corner. One life, and game over. You have run out of lives, your score was zero. So, we know that's working. Fantastic. The next thing that you need to think about is how are you going to extend this game further? And what I would suggest is start trying to think about how you could add um, a level two. So when it touches the, the base, you're not going to want it to game over and show the, the, the win room. You're going to want it to show level two. Uh, once you've done that, you can then uh, create um, another way of gaming over in that room. So maybe a finish sign, something like that. Um, you could take the game even further by changing uh, the difficulty settings as you progress. So increasing the speeds of the enemies, adding more enemies. Um, there's, there's loads of things you could do with this. And I hope this has given you a really good foundation uh, to, to go on and uh, realize how some of these things work and just try out, experiment, play about. Um, you can't break it. And if you break it, just create a new file. You know, um, it's how we learn. So another nice little thing you could do is add some automated turrets. You could um, add a second player by duplicating tank one. Uh, there's so much you could do uh, to extend this game. And I'll, I'll, I'll do a little montage of some of the games my students have designed uh, using this technique because some of them are extremely impressive. Um, so shout out to all of you doing the level three BTEC unit 22. Uh, really good work, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it and subscribe, like and share, please.